Have you ever considered how loud some of the simple pleasures in life are, such as turning on the kitchen tap, or maybe making yourself a cup of tea, or even a fancy coffee on the hob? Or how about sticking your dirty pants oh, in the washing machine? Yes, they all make a racket. But what about some of the real pleasures in life? No, I'm not talking about clubbing, I'm talking about e-mountain bikes. And how loud are the motors? There are many components on a mountain bike that make some kind of sound or other. One of the main ones I can think about is a free hub. And in this instance, somewhere between 75 and 85 decibels. Of course, there are other things such as squeaky brakes because you've just cleaned them or they are badly maintained. Or how about a super tacky rubber tire on some tarmac? In today's video, we're going to be looking at the sound levels of some of the main e-bike motors. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the motors that we're going to be chatting about today. Starting off with the Shimano E8000, followed by the Bosch Performance Line CX, that's the fourth generation version of that motor. Uh, the Levo SL, the super small Levo SL, followed by the Levo itself with the Bros Drive S Mag, and finally the Yamaha PWX. Now to do this, we're gonna have a microphone attached to each bike to give you guys some idea of how each of the motors sound. And we're gonna be using a sound meter to get some accurate readings off those motors. Now we're gonna be going through the cadence range from low cadence to high cadence to show you just what difference uh, the sound levels are between low and high cadence. Uh, putting the bikes through the rev range, if you like. We also need to take into account some other factors such as the age of the motor, the life of the motor, and the fact that the same motor from the same manufacturer might have some subtle differences between them. Plus, of course, there's the frame that that motor is attached to. Each frame might amplify that motor differently, for example, between aluminium and carbon. Clearly what we're doing isn't an exact science and obviously the motor sounds will vary depending on different conditions and we clearly cannot replicate all of those. Things such as the rider weight or maybe the load being put on the motor or maybe some environmental factors such as heat or gradient. Now before we begin, here's an idea of the sound levels of those kitchen appliances. What about a cat? Mm, about 45 decibels. Right, let's get cracking. First up is the Shimano Steps E8000 motor bolted to a Canyon Spectralon. Uh, it's a full aluminium chassis on this bike. Now, the characteristics of this motor is that it's got quite a natural feel to it. But as you can hear in this video, when you get to 25 kilometers an hour, there's quite an abrupt cut off in the motor. Hence, the sound drops quite dramatically. Uh, talking of sound, uh, some badly maintained brakes are actually louder than the motor going downhill on this bike. In terms of the sound range, we're looking at between 80 and 85 decibels on quite a steep incline and obviously in full power mode, which are all the bikes in this video. Now you might also want to consider how much noise you make on the bike. In this case, heavy breathing, so maybe not. Okay, next up is the fourth generation Bosch Performance Line CX motor, bolted to a white E150S, kindly loaned to us by Kat and Gareth uh, from a local trail center called Pella Bikeway in the Forest of Dean. Uh, Kat obviously trying to grab attention here. Now there's a beautiful metallic sound to this motor, and as you go through the range, it's really smooth. There's no abrupt cutoff at 25 kilometers now, just a smooth taper as you go beyond that. Now in terms of the sound range, on this bike. As you can see from when you start off on a low cadence, it's around about 70 decibels, moving up to about the mid 80s as you're in full power, going up a really steep incline. Okay, just about to go up Savage Hill. Now 
Now we've just done a run with the Bosch motor on this white bike and what's really quite interesting is even though it's slightly quieter than the Shimano motor going uphill, it's the freewheel that actually makes a sound up now to about 88, 90 decibels. So that's actually the loudest part of the motor and not when you're driving forwards. Now before we move on to the Levo SL, I just want to say that most of us actually do tend to tune out the sound of the motor and tend to focus on other things such as the tyre ripping into the soil or your heart rate as you're cresting an alpine terror climb or maybe the sound of your bike as you're thundering through some of the best Mediterranean limestone. Uh, but the Levo SL, what about the Levo SL? Well, we've just recently done a feature on the Levo versus the Levo SL. So it's actually going to be really con uh, interesting to compare the sound of the two bikes. Now, many people say the SL has got a loud motor, but as we can see in this video, it's actually really quite quiet. It's actually really, really smooth through the range. There is a cutoff at 25 kilometers an hour, but it's not really ad abrupt at all. It really tapers into into the into the speed above that in terms of the sound levels as you can see it's about kind of 80 to 85 decibels but it really really does love to spin out into the high 80s that's quite interesting we listen to uh, different sounds uh, my neighbor's lawnmower is probably the noisiest thing in the village at the minute along with another neighbor's leaf blower uh, but anyway you guys want to know about e-bike motors and what about the bros drive s mag fitted to the specialized Levo. Well, a super, super smooth motor, again, like many of the others. Really torquey though, obviously, this bike has got 90 newton meters of torque. And what's quite interesting is that you can actually run a higher gear on the same hill climb on the Levo compared to other bikes which are changing gear a lot more often. And hence, uh, you can see that in the different sound levels. Actually, the sound level on the Levo is from the sort of mid to high 80s. Um, but also there's some noises on the Levo which we hadn't accounted for, such as the super tacky Asagai tires, which make a considerable noise, as does the freewheel on the bike as well, which is actually louder than the motor, as we found uh, on the Bosch bike. We're now on the uh, Levo. There are many things that affect the sound levels of an e-bike, such as gradient, rider weight, and also cadence. Now I'm now running about 40 RPM in turbo mode. I'm just going to go up through the cadence range. As you can see, it gets up to a certain speed and then it transitions past 25 kilometers an hour. Now this time I'm going to show the effect of mode on sound levels. I'm now in eco mode on a pretty steep hill. Up into trail. and into boost. As you can see, the cadence rises and so does the sound levels. Now, I've done these sound recordings using my sound meter. However, one thing really does bother me, and that's some bikes actually uh, give out higher decibel readings than others, even though in reality, such bikes as the Levo actually sound quieter. So I've actually got Giles, uh, my sound engineer on the, on the line. Uh, Giles, can I ask you a question, please? Yes, of course. So, so why is it then that bikes such as the Levo uh, give out higher readings than maybe, say, the Bosch bike, when in reality they do actually sound, one bike sounds quieter than the other? Well, what's happening with your decibel meter is uh, due to the specialised sounding a lot more in the lower frequencies as opposed to the other motors, which are outputting more in the higher frequencies. The sound meter will be picking up these low frequencies at a, at a higher um, volume. 
Um, this is just due to mainly the, the wavelength of the sound. So with lower frequencies, you have a longer wavelength and the meter will pick the lower frequencies up as being a, a louder sound as opposed to the higher frequencies coming across as quieter. It may be giving you a slightly false reading um, due to the different frequencies and also how the ear picks things up as well. Yeah. Um, so your ear works the same as a motor effectively it's a linear motor um so and it's the same if we if we stand in front of a, a speaker we can hear the bass end a lot more than we can if than the high frequencies especially if there's a wall in between you and the speaker cool well i guess i guess the only way you can get a true sort of idea of how you know how loud these e-bike motors is, is actually go out and ride them yourself and i guess we all got different uh we're all made up differently and, and we'll probably find out it's all different. So what have we learned from our sound test? Well, the first thing is that sound really is a complex business, way more complex than I thought at the beginning. Second point is that, you know, we all perceive sound very differently and so do machines. For example, why does the sound meter record a washing machine at 70 decibels compared to an e-bike at 90 decibels when the e-bike is clearly uh, far quieter? And the third point though, I think uh, proves that all e-bike motors are around about uh, the same sound level. But uh, let's know your thoughts about sound. Does sound matter? And uh, let us know in the comments down below.